Stairs are an integral part to the function of most buildings. Even if a building is only a single story, oftentimes exterior grade conditions require the need for stairs to get into the building. This aspect of a building's construction may seem inconsequential when considering the overall project, but material makeup, code requirements, and lead times can play a crucial role in the completion of a building project. We're going to discuss a few of these aspects as they pertain to the use of metal stairs in commercial projects. The general makeup of metal stairs is no different from any other stair system. They still incorporate stringers to support the treads and risers, and railings for fall protection and handholds. Now, we'll get into code requirements related to these elements in a minute. Metal stairs come in a range of styles and finishes, the most common of which is a metal pan stair. This system utilizes sheet metal cold formed to create the treads and risers which are supported by clip angles attached to the steel stringers. This stair system gets the term pan because the tread is recessed below the top of the riser creating a trough or pan. The pan is filled with lightweight concrete to create the finished tread surface of the stair. Now, using concrete for the surface makes the tread very durable in high foot traffic areas that are common with commercial buildings. Finishing capabilities for these systems is very broad, but commonly includes painting of the stringers and railings. The stringers and railings could also be galvanized if considering an exterior application. Now, the risers can also be painted with the concrete treads left exposed, or the treads and risers can be covered with a multitude of different finish materials, all depending on the building type. Like most stair systems, metal pan stairs are designed and manufactured on a per-project basis. This is because the floor-to-floor -floor height condition for most building projects is rarely the same but regardless of the condition, the stairs still have to meet specific code requirements. Typically, each riser for commercial stairs cannot be greater than 7 inches in height, while the tread length, which is measured from the nose of one tread to the nose of the tread above, must be a minimum of 11 inches. The industry standard term for this requirement is 7 inches of rise for every 11 inches of run. Now, with respect to regulation, there is one other requirement when considering stairs, the Americans with Disabilities Act. ADA requires that on any given flight of stairs, all steps shall have uniform riser heights and tread widths. So, let me explain that real quick. A flight of stairs is one continuous run of stairs before you get to a transition element that would either be the next floor or a landing. So within that run of stairs, all the treads and risers have to be uniform in height and depth. Once you transition to a next flight of stairs, those heights and depths can change, but they do have to be uniform. Additionally to that, the risers are not permitted to be open. This is to prevent any potential foot slipping past the tread and causing a fall. So this covers the stairs themselves, but what about railings and handrails? Well, in areas where the sides of stairs are not confined by walls and the total rise of the stairs is more than 30 inches above the floor or grade level, a railing is required to provide fall protection. Railings must meet three standards. Overall height from the top of the tread, spacing between vertically and horizontally oriented balusters, and spacing between bottom of the rail and stair treads. The overall height of a railing may not be less than 34 inches, measured in a vertical fashion from the nose of the tread. Intermediate rails or balusters must be spaced to prevent passage of a sphere 4 inches or more in diameter. 
and the triangular space that is created between the tread, riser, and the bottom of the rail must not allow passage of a 6 inch diameter sphere. All commercial stairs, regardless of their location, are required to have handrails on both sides. ADA requires these rails to be between one and a quarter and one and a half inches in diameter, or if they're not round rails, the shape shall provide an equivalent sized gripping surface. Additionally, the open space between the back side of the rail and the attachment surface must be a minimum of one and a half inches. The gripping surface of the rail must fall between 34 and 38 inches vertically above the stair nose. Now, as if this isn't enough already, there are a number of other requirements in addition to these, and those all depend on the makeup of the stair system. So what you should be beginning to realize now is that there is a lot involved in the design and fabrication of stair systems and getting it right involves careful evaluation and planning. Because of this, the lead time for the design and manufacture of metal stairs typically ranges between 6 and 12 weeks, but can be as much as 16 weeks, depending on the complexity of the stair system and workload of the contractor. Considering that the stairs will be a critical element in safe access from floor to floor on your project, monitoring the status of their design and production is very important to maintaining the project schedule.